Thank you very much. Uh, th th thank you, Wendy, for starting this off in a, in a serious and interesting manner. I have to say I, I'm quite confounded by this because it's quite clearly wrong to pay for wrong sex. There is no one in this room, I dare say, who will shed a tear for anyone who is jailed for trafficking in toddlers. That, I think, is an absurdity to start a discussion about the very serious, momentous issue of human sexuality. So we're all opposed to coercive sex. We're all opposed unequivocally, I'm sure, to the kind of stories we hear about the Russian mafia trafficking women whose passports are stolen from them and then they have to work off their fare and so on. Uh, these are all obvious. They're not debatable. I won't debate them, therefore. But what we have, I, with respect to Wendy just heard, is a perfect contemporary exposition of the early 20th century sociological fallacy, which is you look for a deviant phenomenon and attribute to that the nature of the normal. So by talking about rape, talking about toddlers being abused sexually, this then frames the entire discussion of what you guys and gals may decide to do in your own homes, with your own lust, with your own love, and that is simply methodologically wrong. Furthermore, it begins from a premise that legal distinctions constitute the vocabulary of life's distinctions. And again, this is simply methodologically improper. So, for example, in American sociology, many early sociologists would look at prison behavior and say, aha, this is what life is really like. It's not. It's a prison. It's what it is because of what it is. It's not reflective. And furthermore, I get here, and forgive me for maybe being counter-casting here, but I think this entire argument somehow is profoundly disrespectful to females. If you want to see people paying for sex, I suggest you go to the ground floor of Bloomingdale's. <laughs> the place is full of women paying for unguents, uh, garments, colors, clasps, uh, various instruments of torture, <laughs> uh, <laughs> lust, you name it, but they're paying for their own sense of themselves as sexual creatures and they're not on that floor because they don't like sex and they don't like what it means. And furthermore, uh, what it tells us about is that there's an inner economy to sex that doesn't have to do with raping toddlers, with raping girls who are abused by their fathers. Please, if you're raped by your father, you've got a problem independently of the one we're discussing. That's just how it is. There was a remarkable story in the Times uh, last couple of weeks ago uh, about a website called seekingarrangement.com. In this website, men and women can uh, sign up to be an essentially a rich Wall Street executive. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Rosencrantz, for the, uh, for the um, metaphor, uh, to set up and go through graduate school. Now, in this system, which is not explicitly about sex, it's about a, a wide variety of things, the ratio of women applying to men is 10 to 1. Free choice, 10 to 1. These are probably uh, women you know, I know, who knows? But the, the fact is that, and this is just one anecdote and it's not typical of everything, please don't overextend it, but the fact is that women have a deal with men which requires that they have some relationship with men, especially if they're inclined to reproduce, which still 80% of women in, in uh, North America uh, do. And women know that they will have five to eight years when they're out of the labor force, and it helps to have a guy around the place. 
And so uh, this Uh, the, the fact is that if we, we, we're looking just now, you mentioned, uh, Mr. Donovan mentioned the current uh, male-female balance. In this current recession, uh, recession or depression or whatever it's, it's called, 82% uh, of the jobs lost are male jobs. That means that women will not have a guy, if they want one, this is free choice, please. I'm not a, uh, an obligatory heterosexual uh, um, mastermind here, but if women want a mate, then they're not going to have one of those men that has lost a job. It's a complicated argument, but it's a long story. I'm an anthropologist. We're interested in what people around the world do. 90, over 90% 90 of human marriages are arranged. They're determined by families in terms of the larger interest of the two clans. They usually involve a bride price or a dowry or something like that in which the male usually commits himself to sustaining the female. We, have, uh, we don't do it with cattle. We do it with some exotic uh, unit called the diamond ring. Uh, an engagement ring is the world's stupidest object. The moment you take it out of the store, it's lost 80% of its value, if in fact it has any value at all. Just ask De Beers, they're, they're crying. Uh, but the guy has to pay two months after tax income for this diamond ring to give to the gal to assure her that he's going to be okay. Now, if he's not, she keeps the ring. But the point is that this is a... Um, this is a classic anthropological phenomenon. Um, my time is um, quickly run out. I, have, I had no idea that it's uh, it was. And, uh, <laughs> I Lionel, Lionel Tiger, ladies and gentlemen, his time is up. <laughs>